right, Scott, I trust you did well in your quiz. I trust those of you did well in your quiz. We'll take a look at it, of course, in our next lesson. For now, though, I want to direct your attention up here to some numbers, some statistics. And uh, this is currently our enrollment for K-3 through 8th grade here at Grace Christian School. You can see there's some ups and downs. There's some really big classes. There are some really small classes. Scott, I'm including you in this. Okay, You may not be with us in body, but you're with us in spirit. And uh, we all know there was something wrong in here. But anyway, um, <laughs> we've got kind of our, our, our different grade levels here. And I don't know if there's really a normal that kind of pops off the board, but let's go ahead and analyze and see if we could say this is about how big a normal class is at Grace Christian School. First thing we'd want to do is put the numbers in order class, or in other words, rank, rank them. So uh, you can help me with this by just calling out the first number I should write down. Three. three. Okay, let's go ahead and cross that three out. Okay, next number. Three. Okay, we see another three. Let's cross that out. Again, make sure you cross them out before you write them. Six. Six. Again, cross it out before you write it, lest you forget to cross it out and write it twice. Seven. Seven. Um, seven. There's another seven. seven. There's another seven. Wow, okay, I feel like I'm getting a mode here. All right, what else? Twelve. Twelve would be next. Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen is next, good. Sixteen. Sixteen's next. 17 is next. 25. 25 is last. All right. Now, as we look at these numbers, obviously we've already identified the mode, class 7. seven. seven. Yeah, when you write three of those in a row, um, I mean, there were a couple of threes, but three sevens, clear mode there. Uh, we then want to identify uh, the median. That's an easy number to find, right? And uh, to find the median, remember, we just need to find the middle. middle. Now, the way I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly cross off one at each end. The way my math teacher taught it was salt and pepper. Did I mention that before? Salt, pepper, salt, pepper, salt, pepper. Ah, there's one number in the middle, and that number also happens to be class seven. seven. Okay. All right, so that's uh, seeming like a pretty good normal, right? A pretty good measure of center. We also want to find, though, the average class or the... Um, mean. And this is where it gets fun. Now, I'm going to teach you a little strategy here. I'm going to combine a 3 and 7 to get um, ten. 10. I'm going to combine another 3 and another 7 to get another ten. 10. I'm going to combine a 6 and a 14 to get 20. Notice I'm dealing with nice easy numbers here. Of course, I got this random 25. That's a nice big number all by itself. Um, let's see, what about the uh, the 12 and the 17, or 12 and 7 together? 19. That would be a 19. And then uh, the 16 and 17, can we put those together easily in our head? 23. 20. 33. 33. 33. Let's go ahead and do that. So sometimes when you add, instead of trying to add every individual number, especially if you can make 10s or 20s or something like that easily, helps you add up your numbers, because now look at my units to column. There's only a few numbers, 3, 5, and 9. 17. 131 one is 5. 122 two is another uh, five. 5. So that makes a total of six, 10. Six, 5 and 5 is five 10. Six. And then wow. 1 is 11. 11. All right, so they add up to 117. Now, that's just how my brain ticks. I group numbers to make easy addition. That's kind of a, a slow-mo slow version of how my brain works. But how many total numbers are up here? Six. Let's go. Let's go back up to not, not these numbers. The actual numbers. How many? Because I was just finding a quick way to get the total. How many individual numbers are up here? Eleven. And she has already counted. So we're going to take the one seventeen divided by the eleven. Of course, eleven goes into eleven one time with one. I mean, no. Nothing left. Eleven goes into seven zero times with obviously seven left. Eleven goes into seventy uh, seven. Wait, no, six. Six yeah. times with. Uh, uh, four, four left over. It would go into 40 um, three times. So basically 10.63, we could say approximately 10.6 would be our mean, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, I am curious because one number is obviously of these three measures of center, one is clearly different. That would be the mean. Which is the best measure of center? Here's a question. Are there any outliers? Remember what makes an outlier is it's a lot different from the other numbers around it, right? Which number, when we ranked them, was a lot different than the others? 25. 25. There was a gap of 8 between it and the next nearest number, wasn't there? 
Would three be an outlier? No. Can't be. There's two of them. And for that matter, even the three is only three away from the next number, which is only one away from. No. And, and again, gap of five, gap of two, gap of two, gap of what? Gap of eight. That's a big gap. That would be your outlier. So since there is a clear large outlier, we would expect the mean to skew to the big side, right? So yeah, because of that outlier, probably the mean is not the best measure of center. Probably if we were to say, what's a typical class at Grace Christian School? Some are bigger, some are smaller, but seven's about normal class size here at Grace. Um, obviously, this isn't normal, right? We're on the smaller end of it, but uh, you know, we just try to take what is normal. There's a new term I want you to write down on this paper that you've got. It's the term dispersion. Dispersion. Dispersion refers to how widely the values in a data set are spread out. And we've got quite a bit of spread out here, don't we? Especially at the upper end. Dispersion refers to how widely values in a data set are spread out how widely values in a data set are spread out. And there's a couple of ways we're going to talk about now In 10th grade, in Algebra 2, you'll talk about some others. But I want to talk about a couple of easy ways to identify how wide a dispersion is. The first one is called the range. And this is a term you should be familiar with from years past. Range refers to the difference between the highest and the lowest numbers in a data set. The range refers to the difference between the highest and lowest numbers in a data set. Obviously, in this data set, the highest number class is 25, and the lowest number is 3. So what would the range be for our particular data set? Um, 20, wait, um, 28. The difference oh, wait, between the highest and lowest. Uh, 22. 22. Now think about it. <laughs> At Grace Christian School, if you were to say, hey, how many kids are in this grade? Now granted, our 25 is split into two classes of 12 because we don't want numbers that big. So as far as in the classroom, that outlier would have been taken care of. But how many students are enrolled in each grade? That's what I was showing is enrollment. There's a range of 22. Some, there's one class that has 22 more than another class. That's a pretty big range. That tells you these values are dispersed fairly widely. Does that make sense? There's a lot of up and down, a lot of you know, hit and miss. You'd see if we were to make this into a bar graph, you'd see some really long bars and some really short bars. Does that make sense? So the dispersion, the range is a quick, easy way to tell how, uh, how spread out the dispersion is. And of course, it's going to also indicate likely outliers. You have a dispersion this big, probably there's at least one major outlier, and there was. There was the 25. In fact, the, the range would have only been 14 if it hadn't been for that outlier, correct? Um, so the range is one thing. There's another thing that uh, we're going to look at today. This is the focus of our lesson. It's what we call a five-number summary. A five-number summary. Now, the range is great for pointing out outliers, but a five-number summary kind of shows the dispersion throughout the entire group. How dispersed is the entire group? For instance, um, we could have, for instance, had classes of two, 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 well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten classes of two, and um, we could have had a class of 97. Now, this would have a very different range, obviously, but it would also have a very different, uh, it would have the same mean, right? It would have a very different median, things like that, but this is pretty consistent data set, isn't it? I mean, that would be a really strange situation if these were classes in a school, but I mean, there's definitely consistency. What's normal? Two is definitely normal. There's one wacko class that somehow is 97 kids, but it's in classes of two are what you'd expect, which is just kind of weird, but you get the idea, right? How big are the numbers dispersed throughout the entire data set? Obviously, there's more variety here. Here's what a five-number summary includes. First of all, it includes what we call the min, meaning the minimum value, the smallest number. Then I want you to put three tick marks, and then on the next tick mark, we'll put the max. It's a five-number summary, so there are five numbers. We're going to start with the min, that's the smallest value, that requires no math. And the max, that's the biggest value, that requires no math. 
the middle value is going to literally be the middle value of the data set, the median. So for the middle tick mark, go and write the median. That's going to be the third number in the data set. Now I've got a new term for you for these two values. These two values are going to be referred to as quartiles. Do you see kind of the word quarter in there? Quartiles. A quartile, quartile refers to the middle value of a half. So I'm making it basically a fourth. Does that make sense? The middle value of a half. A quartile is the middle value of a half. And we refer to this as Q1, the first quartile, and Q3, the third quartile. So these are Q1 for the first quartile and Q3. And you might be like, well, Mr. S, what happened to Q2? Well, remember what quartile means. It's a fourth, right? Two fourths would be a half. That's the median. That's halfway. So that's why it's Q1 and Q3, the first quartile and third quartile. Basically, what we would have to do is, as we look at this data set, if you can see beyond all the little cross outs, can you still tell what the numbers are here? We said this right here is the median. So seven is my median. Three is my minimum. 25 is my maximum, correct? That's easily, we already identified all of that. If we were to look at these numbers that are to the small side, this is the small half. This is my first half. And I want to find salt and pepper, salt and pepper right here. Do you see how this is the middle value of the first half? That means it's a fourth of the way through the data set. It's a quarter, it's a quartile of the way through. So we would say that six is my first quartile. Go ahead and get that down. Does that make sense how to find the first quartile? Anyone want to hazard a guess on how we find the third quartile? Um, you do the middle value of the second quarter. No, find the second half, the, second big, half. the big half, and find the middle value. Which number is the middle value of the big half? 16. 16. Now notice, the first three numbers are all really tightly bunched. The second three numbers are widely bunched. What that means is, Grace Christian School has a lot of small classes, but it also has some bigger classes that spread out more rapidly. Now what we're going to practice doing today is taking what we call the five number summary, the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum, and we're going to turn them into what we call a box and whisker. Plot. It's a type of graph. It's got a funny name, doesn't it? Box and whisker plot. Almost feels like, you know, it should be something about a cat. Um, shadow or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but a box and whisker plot. If you would, turn your textbooks to page 427. I want you to see what a box and whisker plot will look like. Page 427 in your textbooks. So let's take a look at what a box and whisker plot looks like. You see here, the box is in the middle, and whiskers go to the ends of the graph. So just straight lines. It's almost like there's the cat's face in the box, and then whiskers sticking off the side. Page 427, Joshua. Page 427. Here's basically how we would graph. I'm going to go ahead and erase the data set here just so we can make some room on the chalkboard. But a box and whisker plot would be drawn. You'd basically have, for us, we'd start at zero. 10, 20, 30, for instance. You'd start by plotting your median. My median is right about 7. I draw a little line for the median. That's right here at 7. I would also draw a line for the first quartile at 6, and a line for the min value at 3. I draw a line for the third quartile at 16, which is just a little closer to 20. And then I draw my max value at 25. So you notice all I'm doing is I'm making all five little lines right here. And you see that's what's drawn there. A box is drawn around the first quartile to the third quartile. The assumption is this is where most of the data is going to fit, is in this box. This is really what most of Grace Christian School has. It goes up to here, there's a whisker, and down to here, there's a whisker. 
And that's a box and whisker plot. Seem pretty easy? Look, if you would, at the box and whisker plot on page 427. What's the median of the box and whisker plot class? The first one, the very first one you see. The very first one. 54 is the median, right? Now, the minimum value is? And the maximum value? Okay, so that's where the whiskers extend. But the box goes from the first to the third quartile, for stretching from the first quartile, 36, up to the third quartile. So the assumption is most of your data is going to fit in that box, but it could go as low as 16 or as high as 84. Does that make sense? Look at the next example. You, uh, there says write the five number summary of the given box and whisker plot. Well, the first thing you'd have to do is figure out what's the minimum value. Well, that's the beginning of the whole plot. That would be at 29. Then the first quartile is at? Uh, 59. Good. The median is at? 79. 79. They like nines, don't they? The uh, third quartile, the end of the box, 106. 106. Yeah, because each, each little minor grid line is two. And then the end of the whisker, the very maximum value that data set has is? Now notice how they write the five number summary. You write them with dashes. So my five number summary would be 3, 6, 7, 16, 25. That's a five number summary. This five number summary, notice, is written 29, 59, 79, 106, 122. Make sense? Um, look at the next example. It says, draw a box and whisker plot using the following five number summary. Look at the five numbers. 5, 14, 25, 38, 47. So notice they put a little vertical line at 5, 14, 25, 38, and 47. Turn the page. Notice they finished a box around the first through the third quartiles. And then once the box was drawn, they just drew whiskers out to the ends. Make sense? What we're going to do today is not even figure out how to find five number summaries. We'll save that for another day. For now, I just want you to practice looking at graphs on page 429 and identifying what is the five number summary. I want you to do numbers 1, 3, and 5 on page 429. Numbers 1, 3, and 5 on page 429. <coughs> practicing reading the box and whisker plot to determine what is the five number summary. And this is to give an idea of how spread out the data is. What is the dispersion of the data set? Number one, what was your five number summary, Josh? 13, 17, 19, 23, 25. Good. Number three, Lana? 11, 27. Oh, that's number two. Number three? Oh, never mind. It's okay. Uh, 50, 0, 57, 68, 94, 97. Good. And then number five, Joshua? 2, 7, 15, 19, 23. Now, if you really want to know where is the most data, in a box and whisker plot, it's, it's got to be within the box, right? The box shows us where most of the data is. The, whichever part of the box is smaller is where there's a more dense population of data. So on number one, look between the 17 and the 19. That's where most of the data must be. Like, that's oh, a fourth of the data is in that small spot. 
If you look at number three, it's between the, uh, the 57 and the 68. That's where most of the data is because that's the smallest part of the box. On number five, the smallest part of the box runs from 15 to 19. So that's where most of the data would be. A fourth of the data is crammed in that small little space. So that kind of gives you an idea of where the most of the data would fall. That's how you can read dispersion with a five number summary. Look across or look at the next page, page 430. Here they've given you the five number summary. They want you to draw the box and whisker plot. Okay, so remember, five little lines, box around the middle three, and then extend whiskers out to the ends. I want you just to do numbers seven, nine, and eleven. Page 430, numbers 7, 9, and 11, drawing the box and whisker plots. Obviously, I'm not having to find it on the little grid line. So in other words, you get kind of to scale what these would look like. This is pretty even all throughout, a little progressively larger each time, but pretty even. The number nine, you get a really tiny section here where it means it's very heavily populated, much more spread out here. But uh, so getting that one is be down toward the end of the graph. And then number 11, I get a little bit of a smaller overall uh, plot being formed there on number 11. All right. so. Again, it's as easy as make five lines, draw a box, and two whiskers. You just have to find the lines. All right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at these on your papers here in just a moment. For now, write down your homework. For now, go ahead and stop where you're at. And uh, we're going to work on this more on Monday. We're also going to take a look at this again uh, in the homework, so you'll get a chance to practice these. But for homework this evening, pages 433 to 434, Pages 433 to 434, do numbers 1 through 5 and 9 through 11. So a much shorter homework assignment than usual. Page 433 to 434, numbers 1 through 5 and 9 through 11.